What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the bakery for another YouTube video. In today's video, we're gonna be making some tools, or better said, accessories for a tool. I've actually been wanting to do this for quite a while now, and I have a hot minute to do it. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to walk you through making some homemade dies for a forging press. So we're gonna gather up our materials and get started. Okay, so for anyone out there that doesn't know, I am the proud owner of a Coal Ironworks 16 ton forging press. Uh, these are made by a company out of Indiana. It was started by two uh, fellow makers and craftsmen. And uh, it's a really great quality machine, awesome company to deal with. Uh, they really care about their customers and their customers work. Um, it's easy to maintain, it's easy to work on, and they provide you a plethora of information as to take care of your own press and they are spot on with customer service with anyone with any issues but in today's video we're going to focus on the dies of the press which is you know the, really the heart and soul of whatever modifications you're doing to metal as you're forging it these here are combination dies that i purchased well actually it came with the machine but they're from coal ironworks themselves and they're precision machined and heat treated and uh, you know the quality is there and they offer a whole line of dies that you can buy from them with that same quality behind them they're a bit pricey for anyone on a budget but I mean the quality is unmatched I mean you're you're getting something that's that's worth that money but for the sake of this video this is gonna be for anybody that's on a budget they're super flexible with their customers again. So there's these other options that I'm gonna take you through and uh, we're gonna build these dies uh, with homemade materials. Okay, so as I said, uh, Coal Ironworks is a really great company that really supports their customer base. With the owners being makers themselves, they really respect the innovation of their customers too. So in addition to the machined and heat treated dies that they make and offer for their machines. They also give their customers the opportunity to purchase blank dies for their machines. And this enables you to have something that already fits your machine, but you can modify the die however you see fit for whatever type of work you might be doing. And they themselves have also innovated. I have three blanks sitting here that we're going to be working with today. And the newest one I just ordered, and they've actually modified the new one to have two holes in it so whatever attachments you make can also be detachable via uh, nut and bolt and now this one blank could theoretically have you know 12 attachments that go onto it so you know super awesome super flexible uh, I mean just it's a really it's a really awesome way to get the most out of your machine so uh, we're just going to get these cleaned up on the wire wheel, get them uh, prepped to start welding, and I'll take you through uh, what we're going to be making. Okay, so today we're going to be making three dies, a full length flattening die, a full length drawing die, and a detachable fullering die. The two older blank attachments that I have are the older model, so they don't have any holes drilled in them, even though I could. Um, these dies are going to be quite permanent, which works out really fine for what I'm making anyway because um, full length flattening dies and fullering dies are quite permanent themselves. Um, I mean, they get used the most often. They're not gonna change. Uh, so it's gonna work out great for the type of work that I'm doing. Uh, so what I have here for those is I have a piece of inch and a half uh, square stock here that I've pulled out of a dumpster. And I have a piece of inch and a quarter round stock here. I'm certainly not going to need all this, but what's nice about these uh, is they're so thick that 
they don't really need to be heat treated. For the type of work that I do, if you're doing consistent daily forging and use of these to where heat is going to really alter the shape and consistency of this steel, uh, then that's a totally different kettle of fish. But for the sake of my work and what I use, I mean, homemade scrap materials are going to work out actually really great here. So uh, we're going to need to get this stuff cleaned up and we're going to need everything prepped to weld. so as you can see here we're well on our way i've got our uh, blank attachments all cleaned and prepped to weld and then i've got all the actual die pieces cut drilled cleaned and prepped to weld as well i ended up finding some one inch round stock that i decided to use for the fullering dies instead uh, i just think they're going to be a bit more versatile and for the purpose they serve i think it's going to be a bit more functional using smaller stock our larger stock, though, is, is ready for our drawing dies. Uh, that's probably going to require two or three weld passes uh, all the way around uh, for some uh, proper penetration to complete the attachment. And then our flattening dies, I went ahead and ground in some bevels. Uh, so that's going to give us some good penetration, make that die nice and solid. Uh, but we're basically prepped and ready and it's great that the machine's here So I'm basically gonna set this up in the machine to tack it up and we're gonna just do one at a time Okay, I got the first set of dies uh, set up and ready to be tacked on uh, So we're gonna have a look at each one as I go. These are the flattening dies. I've got them clamped straight on each other and uh, they're marked on the blanks ready to be tacked up. And I uh, just want to point out going forward, uh, I've now unplugged the press and uh, we're gonna cover up the uh, hydraulic uh, piston here uh, just to avoid any kind of spark rash or anything like that on it. And uh, just, just to tack it up and then we'll get it over to the bench to actually weld it up. But I uh, just want to give you a close up of each one as I go. Okay, last die in, all set up. This one's even more different. The uh, fullering dies here. These are the ones that are gonna be detachable. So, got these set up in my jig. And really the only additional thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, weld up each of these nuts on the, uh, the actual attachments. So I'll only have to just uh, unthread a bolt to change out whatever die I wanna put on these blank ones. So uh, we're gonna get the rest of this tacked up and weld up the rest.
Okay, we are all welded up and cleaned up. Everything is marked as it should be. And the only thing left to do is uh, try them on and see if my girl likes her accessories. That about wraps up this month's YouTube video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I hook my girl up with some new accessories. And again, a huge shout out to Coal Ironworks for making such an awesome forging press and also giving their customers an affordable avenue to modify their machines however they see fit to work with them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this was a good tutorial for anybody looking to pull the trigger on a press or to make your own tools and attachments. Uh, be sure to like this video and let me know in the comments how I'm doing. Uh, and I hope you guys like the material I'm putting together on this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you don't already and uh, maybe share that a little bit. I'm really looking to uh, grow in this uh, maker community and uh, we'll see you next time.